we just had a ton of brand new cosmetics added to the Hunter Call of the Wild with an overarching Traveler's Cosmetic Bundle that allows you to purchase all of them with a little bit of a discount or you can purchase them in map specific bundles. So I wanted to highlight kind of like one cosmetic from a couple of the different bundles. If we went through everything, it would literally take 10 or 15 minutes to see them all. So we've got on our 44 level action, the Te Aoroa English Walnut. And I want to show that in the actual inventory because I think it looks a little bit nicer there. Kind of hidden behind the text of multiplayer. We have on our 22 to 50, my favorite, the Silverish Peaks Premium Wrap. I just think this looks really nice. I like the orange in there. I think it looks really, really cool. Another high up on the list of favorites is the Mississippi Acres Snake Spray. Got that on R22. And then finally, one that I just think is really cool on the 10 gauge shotgun, we've got the Revan Tulico's Waterfowl Camo. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. I'll put the little previews of the different packs up on screen so you can kind of see what's in there. Like I said, we just do not have the time to go through literally everything or that would be the entire video. But we're going to take our newly customized guns for a hunt here on Emerald Coast and see if we can get anything good with them. And it looks like we'll get to start with the 44 lever action, which is kind of good. Because one thing that I wanted to talk about is in the Traveler's Cosmetic Bundle with all those different options, there were, I think, four different walnut wood grains as well as some other types of wood that you could use for the material option. And I really, really like that. I know at some point, probably in the near future, We'll do a hunt where all of our guns are customized with those different wood grains. But I really like that. There's some mahogany woods and stuff in there too. Just a bunch of really cool wood options. And I'm looking forward to getting to customize our guns that way. Because I really think they look nice, especially on something like the 44 lever action. But got that red deer down pretty quickly. So we'll go and take a look. Should be a gold to get us started. Not bad at all. He's going to be a 196. Double lung liver and stomach. At that kind of frontal angle there. Always good to see the 44 doing 44 things. So one thing I really do want from Emerald Coast today is a rare croc. I'd love a gold rare, but we actually haven't killed a rare of any kind just yet. That part of the map is being hunted pretty heavily at the moment. So we'll eventually work our way over there and see what we can find. But that's going to be something at some stage at least that we do put some time into just kind of going along the coast or maybe through the swamp, seeing if maybe we can find one or quite frankly, one maybe that can find us. Now, I do think... We'll probably get some use out of the 10 gauge for Bantang at some point. How on earth we missed that, I have no idea. But, with some quail around, since we're not going to get any opportunity at Waterfowl, I figure we might as well try to get a couple of those. So we are a multiplayer, I'm going to attempt not to just cause a ton of hunting pressure here. And we'll maybe spot around and make sure we didn't miss out on any potential level 3s. But, a couple of little ones there. We'll spot these as they fly off. And it's looking like... We had a bunch of level 1s around here, so we'll continue on our way then. Looking like we might get one more opportunity at a Rusadir before we get down there and go after Crocs. Been kind of just hunting along, looking for kind of anything to go after. And we've gotten to the point that the swamp area is at least not being hunted right now. So we're going to pass through there, see if we can find anything good for Crocodiles. Obviously, we'll be using the 44 for that. We also, though, can use 10 gauge slugs. That's going to be our Bantang ammo as well, should we encounter any of those. But we're going to go ahead and load those just in case. And maybe we get an opportunity to actually use both. As for our Rusadir, just going to be a 90 scoring silver, nothing special. But we are just north, actually kind of northwest of the swamp. So we'll swing back down around. Go see if we can find some crocs. Ooh, so we have two options here. Our first two at least significant crocs of the day. We've got a level 7 max weight and a level 8, which obviously is max weight. The 8's going to try to flee, but I bet we can get that with the 44. If we can find a vital at this insane angle, that would be absurdly impressive with the 44. And I'm not so sure we didn't just hit the, uh, the root there with that follow-up shot. So let's see what he's going to do. Because if we have one more shot, are we starting to go down? No way. <laughs> That's vital blood. That is nuts. Okay, so I don't want to mess up the potential gold. It looks like he's going to stand there anyway. Did we hit him again? Or is that just the very low bleed rate? In the meantime, got an aggressive five. Maybe, with our unloaded slugs, we can try to get him. Did he just attack our dog? Slugs did a pretty good job. So I did bring Sir 12 today thinking 
because we're going after crocs and we may have them running some distance, it may be useful to have the blood owl able to trail them and help us kind of recover them a little bit more quickly. This has been a very interesting minute and a half or so. I gotta know what happened. Is it just liver? Like, it's obviously an underpowered round. <laughs> as the other crocs just sitting there. Stomach and liver, that's why he probably didn't go down as quickly. But even, there's nothing else in the game that does that. Like, is it through the back leg? It is. To go through the back leg, get into the stomach, and still punch all the way to the liver? That's why it's such a fun gun to bring on a croc hunt. 909 gold, because we're able to get the vitals. And we'll just let that, I think he was level 3, sit there and enjoy whatever he's trying to do. Is that magpie leucistic? I think it is, and I think that's a big gold. Okay, we gotta be really careful because we're in croc territory. We give this too long. There could be a croc over there that goes and spooks it. That is leucistic, 100%. My favorite rare for the magpies. We gotta shoot through those roots, but I think we try it. Well, that hit the root too. Okay, that alerted him. That's why we're trying to be super careful with this. I wasn't really sure what would happen there, but I know multiplayer and bird hunting can be really, really finicky, and the last thing I want is to let this flock take off. Kinda, that was weird. It's almost as if the hitbox of the root maybe moved him. We just gotta keep an eye on him. If he goes to alert or anything, we gotta start flinging some lead at him, because if they go to fly away, I, I don't know if we can get them to come back. We should be able to with the setup and stuff, but that's not a risk I want to take. So he's all the way calm again. We're at 120-ish? I don't see anything that should stop the round, so we'll aim this low. That got him. And that is with this snake spray from Mississippi Acres. Our first trophy of that new cosmetics pack. It should be a really good one. I'm quite confident that'll make Goldie was the max estimate. I think it's a guarantee. And it's an amazing looking bird. So I think our first shot, we were maybe shooting through these roots and just hit the hitbox of them. Second shot got him. That is that leucistic variant I talked about. Gold at 3.51, that's taxed that so we don't lose it. That is something I've been wanting to add to the lodge since we got our first leucistic, which happened to be a silver, and I think it had just barely missed gold itself. But I've mentioned it, and magpie geese kind of exhibit this anyway. Especially with leucistic variant, it's such a prehistoric looking bird. I just think it's really, really awesome. That's going to find a prominent place in the lodge for sure. And it's all because I spotted the level 1 female goose landed out there. I just figured we'd go and check and see if there was anything landed with it. The fact that, you know, they were right there. There were no crocs in the area. It's absurdly lucky that we even got that. And another thing that I just want to talk about a little bit with multiplayer and what I call multiplayer etiquette. One thing you don't want to do is get yourself kicked from a multiplayer server, which, not that you would know this, but which may eventually lead to a trophy. And one thing I'll try to do is just stay out of the way of people that are hunting on the map, because if you do try to hunt where the host is going, you might get kicked. So we just went and hunted red deer and whatever else we shot, some quail and stuff. Come down here after the fact, gold leucistic magpie waiting on us. Well, that's a thing. Uh, already defensive, already spooked, probably because of crocs. A level 5 magpie. Boy, is that in a spot that we should be able to get it. Should be able to get it versus actually getting it are two very different things, but it's close enough. And flying straight. Oh, we, I think we hit it. Is that what that was? We did hit it. Okay. Key to keep it spotted. There is a thing that happens where I've seen it with a hit magpie goose before. We just lost the spotting, which kind of sucks. They'll actually go back into that, like, what I call migrating mode where you can't spot them. And I'm pretty sure they just fly away as if they're unharmed. Uh, we got hunting pressure. I'm gonna mark where that other one was. And the good news is Sir 12 can help us here. This is another spot where actually having the Bloodhound could be really key. Now to be fair, so could the Retriever. But I guess in this case when we don't know where it was, either one could be quite useful. So there's blood. And what happens with Waterfowl for whatever reason is that the blood will very, very quickly disappear. So, well, I wanted to... Do we have the glitch again? No, so 12 is just <laughs> way over there. He just warped here. And ultimately, at the end of the trail, 
we've got one dead level five mag by goose so back to back kills a leucistic level four and then uh i guess that would be max estimate five it was three to four flies right over us and luckily we were able to make that shot this is gonna be a diamond 3.89 i think that's a low ish weight for diamond 3.85 is the requirement so we just barely made it but we'll tax that for sure i don't think we had a maroon diamond this is only maybe our second or third. I can't remember if we've been trolled once or twice. Pretty darn cool. Hit him in the sternum at 206. And that was a better example of why we were being super careful with that leucistic one. If we did, you know, miss twice in a row or if the first shot had actually completely spooked it, we could have been in real trouble. Trying to make that shot can be really tough, especially when it's super tense. But we're just going to keep on shooting whatever's in front of us. Did that not get along? Okay, how did that not get along? I think that did. Well, that was rather odd. And for whatever reason, he appears to be trying to swim in the air a little bit. Hit him in the leg, and you see, like, the leg normally stops bullets. Second shot, right in the shoulder. Stop that slug cold. I think it would have clipped the lung just barely had it gotten through. And then we got a couple of long shots when the leg wasn't in the way. Would have been a gold. But, go figure, you know, I kind of mentioned wanting to get, specifically, a rare croc. We've ended up with a rare magpie goose, and now a diamond magpie goose. So, can't complain. Maybe there's a trophy croc out here waiting on us, too. So, unfortunately, no trophy crocs to be found. But we fired the 10 gauge, we fired the 44, we fired the 22 to the tune of two trophies. We have not fired the one gun that has my favorite new cosmetic, the Silver Ridge Peaks Premium Wrap. That is the 22250, and that is going to be the gun sending a bullet directly at this level 4 hog tier. Now, the angle is not ideal, and we did alert him, so I wonder, can we get kind of a lucky broadside angle here? I think even that might work. But, the 22250 doesn't have great penetration, it's not the 44, which we could use, but I want to use this instead may even try a neck shot. Let's see what he does. <laughs> well, helps to not shoot directly over it, but I think the second shot did find his mark. Luckily, he stood there for just long enough. That's gonna get it done. This gun is really cool looking. I'm almost sure that's gonna be in the thumbnail somewhere. I really like that wrap, and I really want to try it on some of the other guns, but between all the different camouflages, the premium wraps, of the new premium wraps, like I said, that's by far my favorite. I think it stands out the most. And then all those wood materials, there is a lot to play with. I'm looking forward to having some different looking guns for our future hunts. So kind of a bummer, I guess, to miss our first shot with this cool looking 22250, but made up for it on the second shot. Brought down what I think is going to be a gold hog deer. He is at 88. Left long shot, and we were able to punch through kind of a bit of the leg. We did avoid the leg bone and the shoulder blade, which was probably pretty key. And I think even, honestly, if we hit that first shot, it would have been in the spine. So, lucked out ultimately. It is the beginning of Hogdeer drink time, though, and I think we'll kind of run around and see if we can find any more of them. Well, fortunately, we do have another Hogdeer out here that's pretty good size himself. 84 to 101. And even better than that, we don't have to worry about trying to rush a shot because of him being alert and spinning around that time. Should have tucked that right into the crease. I did not see his health star to go down yet, but almost certainly it will. I think that was him running through there. Didn't get him spotted, but I'm quite confident he'll be going down eventually here. And it did bring him down relatively quickly. I'd say he made it maybe 200 meters. Should be a single lung shot again into the left lung. That scores 95 hidden behind the chat there. Still, as much as this new and improved harvest screen is so much smoother, if we could get it moved back to where it was, so the metal and the score are above the chat, that would certainly be nice. Anyway, I think we're going to try to get maybe one more kill if we can luck into another good size hog deer. And honestly, this whole river, creek, whatever you want to call it, is really good for them, so I'd imagine we can stumble into one more. This, though, may be a recipe for the 44. I definitely trust it a little bit more. However, turn and broadside, we could have done it with the 22-250. But I think that's going to be our last kill. I definitely want to go back, try to figure out how we're going to arrange our two new Magpie Geese trophies. We've actually got the Silver Leucistic that we shot months ago. Somewhere still displayed in the lodge, so the gold will take its place. 
but I'm not too sure where we want to put the diamond just yet. As for, I think our third hog deer of the hunt should be our third gold if I'm not mistaken. 86, I'm pretty sure that says, or possibly 88. Double lunged him with the 44 and he was in fact 86.68. So on that note, we'll jump back to the lodge and take a look. So I found it interesting. It was almost six months to the day, I guess 10 days away, but on 12-12, we replaced our old silver leucistic magpie with a gold, and I want to put him on the full body mount. Now, I'm not sure if we have the wings open. Does that pass through the glass? It kind of does. I think we can fix it. Not too bad. So that'll be in a place where anytime we come in here, we always go through this doorway here and down the hall. We'll see that sitting there. Definitely one of my favorite kills from the ground. Never would have expected that. And then, of course, we end up getting a level 5 diamond out of the air not long after. I put that just in here, replaced an old gray gold Canada Goose. I just really like the look of it. That maroon fur type, or plumage type it should be. I just, I like that a lot. And I feel like, again, that prehistoric look of the magpie geese. It adds a little something to this trophy lodge. I think more so than just a, an old gray gold, which, when we shot that... I don't even think they were as rare as greys are now, so definitely a little improvement. And go figure, we go out for a little hunt with the new cosmetics, just try to find something decent, end up with two pretty significant kills, our biggest rare magpie ever, and another diamond to add to the trophy lodge. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video, so as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.